We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. Carl. So Carl uh, asks, I guess it's the ask, uh, the Ultra HD Blu-ray release of Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk has pretty much been universally recommended as a demo disc. Having been shot with two cameras at 120 frames per second per eye in 3D, Mm -hmm. and it's now being released at 60 frames per second on Ultra HD Blu-ray. Not 3D, because there's no such thing as UHD 3D. 3D, that's correct, yeah. So every reviewer seems to agree that has a look unlike anything we've seen at home before with detail and clarity that is unmatched. There's also quite a strong division, either love it or hate it reaction. Nobody actually seems to think the movie itself is very good, (laughs) which is probably part of the problem here. Uh, So maybe that's something to do with it. But strictly on the technical side, some reviewers are are blown away by the clarity, while others just can't accept the high frame rate look and strongly uh, that strongly resembles the soap opera effect. So what do you think about shooting and viewing movies at high frame rates? Is this something that we should uh, that should only be used for live sports and concert, or is this the future of movies as well? I think concerts look weird Discuss. when it's shot that way too. <laughs> well, I've you know I've seen I've seen a little bit of this stuff over the years here and there, uh, the soap opera effect, and it is distracting. It is okay. There's no doubt about. It. I ha- I would really like to see The Hobbit for the high frame rate. Mm. I would. But uh, there's no home release that actually has the high frame. Rate, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. Well, there's that, and the fact that I don't want to watch The Hobbit. Yeah. Like, I frankly just can't. I I can't bring myself to watch it. I haven't watched one second of it. I don't even think I saw any of the previews <laughs> up to the first one. So, um, to me, there's a funny <laughs> duddiness to this whole thing. You hear people complaining about it, and it. It has a, very much the speak the the sound of get off my lawn, you know. Uh, Twenty four frame sex is good enough for my dad. It's good enough for me. It's gonna be good enough for my kids. Anything to go scrap. Okay, that bothers me. That being said, it kind of does look weird. It looks weird. <laughs> okay, I I can't disagree with that. No, I can't it, disagree with that. that it makes, looks weird. It makes the movie look like you're watching a stage play. That's that's what it does. It does. Okay. Now, this is where I come into the whole idea of it's not the frame rate that's the issue. Okay? It's not the frame rate. The issue is that we, you are dealing with uh, a completely new way of designing sets, of doing lighting, of framing shots that directors and the, the crew are not used to dealing with yet. You know, when we started seeing uh, high definition, <laughs> suddenly, you know, some some of the complaints I was hearing very early was like, you know, I'm not going to be able to just do this sort of cover up thing to this, you know, this actress or actor or this sort of special effect makeup thing anymore because you'll be able to see it because it's high definition. Right. I think that's what's happening here. Mm, the I look of the motion, of it. though, it's it's. Uh, it just it like you know when you go to a stage play, it takes you a while to get into the stage play because you're you're just aware that it's a facade. You're aware that you're watching people acting, right? Yeah. And after a little while, you get into it, and plays are enjoyable, but it's not the same experience as a movie. For some reason, that little bit of blur, that little bit of strangeness to the motion, which is actually unrealistic, right? Movies don't look like real life, but somehow that helps us to suspend our disbelief. <laughs> I think. Um, I think it's just something we're so very used to that what I, anything, what I want anything is, unusual yeah. is, pulls us yeah, out of I, it. Yeah. I know, because there are the people who are like, you know what, I like the uh, frame interpolation on my 120 hertz TV. I think it looks smoother and better. And I'm like, I, I can't stand watching a movie with you know frame interpolation turned on, but some people do like it. So they'll, they'll love this. It was shot yeah. originally. But my, my genuine opinion is, I do think actually that everything should be shot at 120 frames or more. I think the cameras themselves should be running at that higher frame rate. What I would like to see them then do is choose which frame or combination of frames they use to play back 
at 24 frames per second because I've seen the demonstrations where you shoot something that's very fast action and you shoot it at 120 and then you only show one out of every five frames, right? So it's still being shown to you at 24 frames per second, but you're only grabbing one out of every five frames that was shot at 120. That gives you super clear detail, but you don't get the weird 120 hertz motion. You get the 24 hertz motion. Then for some other scenes, you can actually combine some of the those five frames every 24th of a second. You can combine them to get back some blur if you want it, right? Because you just superimpose the frames and you get the blur back. So yeah. I think everything should be shot that way. It's a bit like recording everything at high resolution, but you don't need it for playback. So shoot everything super high frame rate and then artistically choose how to play it back. I've also heard, uh, you know, like still shots should be 24 and then action shots, they should change the frame rate, a variable mm, frame rate variable. As, you go, as you go along so that the action shots are clear. Because believe me, I mean, I some movies are almost unwatchable in the in the action scenes like mm -hmm. I, I, okay yeah so blurry. somebody somebody's gonna probably string me up for this but the first batman movie i i still and many of those maybe even the second one too i and i'm talking about uh you know the the, the michael keaton ones mm -hmm. you can have you have no idea what's going on <laughs> i am sorry i've seen that movie dozens i even of found times. that in some of the scenes in uh, captain america civil war though i yeah. found some of those i'm like that's a bit shaky and blurry i'm not quite Clear what happened. Not just sure there. what's going on there, and you yeah. know what? I don't like that. Yeah. I have never liked that. It has always bothered me. You know, it has always bothered me that that we can't, that I can't see what's going on during these scenes because they're happening so quickly. And I think that some of that is being used to hide mm -hmm. things that are not looking realistic or whatever. And I think that we should not have to be subjected to that. So, if it's variable frame rate, if it's what Rob's saying, some sort of artistic thing. I think in the end, you know, the complaints that I'm hearing, I feel like overall are just what we're used to versus what we're not. And I think some of it also has to do with how things are yes. filmed and set and stuff like that. Yeah. But, you know, it does look weird. I'm not going to argue weird, with man. you. It does look <laughs> weird. It looks weird to me too. But I, 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 I feel like I need to give it more of a, I saw one movie like it was sucked, and then that's it. I'm I'm washing my hands of it. That's not the way this this goes. <laughs> it's just not the way this that I'm going to operate. I am going to give it much more of a shot than that. I haven't even given it the full movie shot yet because I haven't seen a movie in, in yeah. the high in the high yeah. frame rate. So I would like to see this. I wish the movie wasn't directed by Angling and totally crappy. Right? <laughs> so is it Angling right directed that one? It too, was Angley. Too? That's right. Oh, whatever. I have no idea what the, I've never even heard of this movie before. Well, we're we're going to wait another year at least for uh, the four Avatar sequels because those got delayed yet again. So uh, no more Christmas 2018. Is he waiting for, for Kevin Avatar Costner 2? to make another movie for him to steal? Is that what I, he's doing? I don't I don't know what James Cameron is doing. He, but he, this is a whole thing. He's he's all about the high frame rate, so I think he's uh he's finding some difficulties perhaps. Just delay. <laughs> Want your question answered? Send it to question at avrant.com. A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.